So uh, state your name and profession. I'm uh, Mr. Bradfield. I am a high school math teacher. All right. Um, and how long have you been working here, uh, Mr. Bradfield? Since 2002. 2002. So. So it's like my 20th year. But oh, I've cool. also not been here the whole time. I took a, three years off back in 2006 because my wife and I left to join the Peace Corps. And then I was rehired here in 2009. And then in 2012, I think, no, 2013, my wife and I and my two kids, we left the country again to go teach in Costa Rica. And I came back in 2014 and they hired me back again. So I've been here since 2002, but I've also taught abroad several times. I remember, I remember you saying that during class. It was, uh, it was, it was pretty nice to hear. Um, so how was it like over there in Costa Rica? Uh, it was challenging, that's for sure. I mean, it was beautiful. My wife and kids loved it. Um, I was working. Uh, my daughter was in preschool, no, yeah, preschool. So she was immersed in complete, uh, you know, Spanish at school. Um, my son hung with my wife for the most part. And uh, it was a small town we lived in. And so we had some close friends that were our neighbors. And, uh, I don't know. It was um, there's a lot to talk about. I'm not sure I can squeeze it all in in just a minute or so. But anyway, it was it was challenging for me. It was challenging. The school that I worked at was was pretty tough. It was a small private school, <clears throat> and it was um, basically run by the parents who knew best. It, yeah, I'm probably gonna come off sounding negative, so I'll probably just. Leave it at that. It was a challenging year, to say the least. Yeah, I can, yeah. I can see how challenging it could be when the parents run the school. You know? Basically, yeah. yeah. So, uh, where did you go to school, and where did you graduate? Well, so high school, I went to I went to school in Long Beach Unified. I went to Lakewood High School, uh -huh. and then I graduated from college, and I went to Cal State Long Beach. Uh -huh. Did you enjoy your time when you were uh, in school? Um, no. Not really. I'm. I just didn't like school, to tell you the truth. I, I. My major was math. Obviously, it was really hard. I was not one of those like students, like honor students. I've never taken an honors class in my life. I was just kind of a normal math student, you know, trying to get a trying to get a degree in it. Did I say my master's? I meant my degree. So anyway, it was really. Um, it, yeah, it was hard. I broke my hand at one point because I studied and studied and studied only to get an F on a test. Jesus. That I studied and studied for. I formed study groups, everything. I was so organized and I went outside and I punched a wall so hard I broke my, uh, I broke my, oh, one of the bones in my hand. It, it was really hard. Um, you know, I still have some friends from when I was in school there that I still keep in touch with, so that's cool. But um, for the most part, I just wanted to be done. I just wanted to get going with my life, and yeah. I mean, I can see why you would punch a wall, because like th that that would be pretty uh, frustrating to like yeah. know that you worked so hard to end up not doing so well on it. Yeah, yeah, so yeah it was tough. Well. But you know what? That wasn't the end of my experience. You know, like it, I went on. Like that was just one. You know, I guess stumbling block along the way you know it wasn't like what defined me and you know it wasn't like that's where my experience ended you know it was one challenge that I had to get through one hurdle and you know I've gone on since then to live a really you know cool life you know full of adventure and really great experiences you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so it's like yeah I was caught up in it in that moment but you know I fought through it I fought and just kept going all right, that's pretty nice. Um, do you enjoy working here? Yeah, I really do like working here. Downey's my home. Like I said, I've been here since 2002, and I, I really like the students. I love the administration. Um, you know, I, I love the fact that they'll let me quit my job and go teach abroad and come back and hire me again. You know, they've let me do it twice, you know. Jesus Christ. Okay. So yeah, I, I really do like my job a lot, you know. For the most part, there's not, it's not to say there hasn't been really hard years, hard moments. I mean, this year is really hard for me. I'm uh, all over the map in terms of how my emotions are right now. Like I'm up and down and up and down, like highs and lows. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know it comes comes out in front of the students sometimes, you know. Um, but yeah, so 
I really do, for the most part, overall enjoy it, you know, uh, being here at Downey. Yeah, I feel like I feel like if I was a teacher with the current personality, cause it, at some point my personality is gonna change. Uh, who knows? But if I feel like if I was a teacher with my current personality, I feel like I would be a a bit more energetic or like a bit character charismatic. If that's how you put it. Um, yeah. Because you know, with the reactions I do, it's a bit over the top, but still gets a laugh or a chuckle. Yeah. Um, yeah you definitely got to be an entertainer if you're gonna be a teacher. Yeah. All right, uh, this is the personal one. Uh, what do you like doing outside of work? You can answer this if you want. Well, for the most part, I like, uh, the main thing that, that comes to mind is riding my motorcycle. I love riding my motorcycle. I love going on road trips and camping on my motorcycle. Um, I get to do that quite a bit. Unfortunately, my motorcycle's in the shop right now. Um, so I, I haven't been riding for about three weeks. So it's kind of a bummer. I love taking, uh, my son climbing. We've been climbing together for five years, and um, that's one of the, the things I love doing the most. Um, yeah, I love hanging with my family for the most part. Um, we're a really busy family, so squeezing that family time in, you know, is, is tough sometimes because, you know, my son's got soccer, you know, they've got music, my, you know, my daughter's got her things going on, like surfing, and we're spread all over the place, you know. But um, I would say motorcycling and climbing are probably my favorite things that I like to do. Yeah, I never expected you to be to say that. Actually, I mean, I, I can imagine like you wearing a, like a white tee and a leather jacket and a biker helmet. Yeah, I can imagine that. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm like, yeah, that, that was out. I did not expect that at all. Like, Jesus. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So I don't know if this still entice, but like, uh, what kind of hobbies do you have? Uh, I mean, same same thing. I mean, that you know. Just motorcycle, uh, uh, rock climbing. I, I've been playing music for years and years and years. I played drums since I was younger than you. Um, I don't do that much anymore because, I mean, we're super busy as a family. We're just like, I just don't have the time. And if I did have the time, I think I just want to sit on the couch and read. Like right now, I'm reading a book called The Midnight Library. Um, I do like stuff like this, artsy stuff, like origami. I've loved origami for forever. I just, I've been folding origami since I was a kid. I love it. Yeah, I can tell um, like there's origami all over the yeah, place. Yeah, out there, you know. yeah. So this is like modular uh, geometric origami. So you fold these little modules and then they all fit together and they create these things. It's really fun. Like mm -hmm. these, that's an icosahedron and uh, I think I have a dodecahedron right there. So anyway. One of them looks like a dice to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're pretty cool. Yeah. Um, uh, look, okay, so next question. Uh, what kind of, what, what is your uh, most favorite food? My favorite food? Um, I love sushi. I love Mexican food. Oh. I mean, I love Italian food, but I guess it'd probably be in that order. Sushi, you know, love sushi. Mm. Yeah. Mexican food, can't get enough of it. In fact, we had Taco Tuesday night last night with uh, Grandpa and the, and the cousins and stuff like that. So every Tuesday we have Taco Tuesday at our house. Uh -huh. Yeah, so love that stuff. Yeah. Italian food, I mean, you know, I, I can expect like Mexican food, Italian food, uh, sushi, sushi. Uh, I recently had sushi this year. Uh, Italian food though. We, I, I'm somehow really good at making Italian food because what, okay, so what's recently been happening? This is just a little side note. Uh, this, like, okay, on the internet, and some people in school have been speculating that I'm part Italian. Okay. So, like, because my dad looked Italian, he looked like a mob boss when he ever wore a suit, fedora, mm -hmm. and a right, cigar. Right. Yeah, he looked like uh, he was Italian mob boss. So, like, people would speculate that because there's some people from Griffiths that came over here, and so I'm like, I'm not gonna confirm nor deny anything because, like, you know, that's. Um, classified technically for me, so I'm not going to confirm nor deny anything about if I'm Italian or not. Okay. But I, what I will confirm is I am Mexican-American. So, right on. Um, next one. Uh, what is the funniest thing that happened to you or a student when you were teaching? Well, I don't know if it's a completely appropriate story, um, but it happened. I guess I could share it. Um, I was teaching, I was a student teacher, and um, 
I honestly don't know if this is appropriate to share. You don't have to if you don't want it. Okay, um, it was extremely funny. Um, sh I'll just, maybe, it, well, let's see if I can share it. It happened in front of everybody. I guess it's, um, you know. Uh, so I was teaching on the overhead. Ugh, you know what? I. I'm sorry. I know that was a I build up, but I'm thinking this is being recorded. I can't. Yeah. I can't. Share it's okay. It. You don't have to. You don't I can't to. share it. Um, yeah. I could tell you one of the most interesting things, though, that's happened to me, uh, like how I became a teacher. Um, I think, um, and it's a funny story. Is uh, hey, there's there's a uh, house. You're you're in time for a story. We're interviewing right now. He's got triple coffee, man. I am like. Ooh. Nice, dude. Oh, are you having a good morning? Yeah, it's pretty good. We're it's recording. He's doing an interview. Oh, yeah. sweet. What are you yeah. interviewing on? Um, uh, how, it it's like an insight of on uh, how he enjoys being a teacher and like uh, to give students like a, an insight on what's it like being a teacher, you know? Yeah. Oh, wow. Can I, can I? Yeah, you can, you can. Can I pitch in on him? Yeah, you can pitch uh, in. Let's talk about him. Okay. Right. Yeah. They got a special guest, so the principal. There it is. What is this for? Uh, this is for YouTube, but I, I okay. can give you the video if you want, or the recording. Oh, no, that's cool. Okay. Uh, so, so continue. Well, so, he asked me what the funniest moment of my teaching career was, mm -hmm. and um, it was when I was a student teacher, but I can't, I don't think that I can say it because he's recording it. It's a little inappropriate. No. Oh, so I'm, I, I was going to tell him um, a funny me? story of what got me into teaching instead. And uh, so I was at Long Beach City College taking a knucklehead dummy math course. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, why am I taking this class? So anyway, I went and I took the placement test and they placed me in college algebra which was one of the classes I taught here for many years. And anyway, there's this teacher that I had that would come into class every single day, just like, like a cartoon character, just spring in a step, carrying a huge stack of books, and he sounded like the Mad Hatter. Like he was a crazy, just like, cartoon person. And anyway, he would teach stuff, and I was like, all of a sudden I'm getting what he's saying, right? You know, I've never really been interested in math or inspired or anything. But I'd ask him questions like, hey, I have an idea. Instead of what you did, can you do this? And he'd go like this, hmm, well, I don't know. Let's try it on a simple problem and see if it works on a simple problem that we know the answer to and see if it works. So he'd try this and he's all, well, we know the answer is this. And if we try your method, we still get this, it works. And I'm just like, wow, that's awesome. And he taught me these cool tricks on how to like, you know, like test out my ideas or, you know, things like that. And I was just like, wow, dude, he's showing me how to like kind of ask relevant questions and apply it to the math and stuff. And I'm just like, dude, and I ended up getting an A plus in his class. Like I was the first A I'd ever gotten that I could remember, you know? Dang. I'm just like, I'm gonna be a math teacher. I'm just gonna do what he did and I'm gonna show kids like how to do math and just, you know. And so anyway, I went on to trig, I got an A in it, pre-calculus got an A in it, and I decided I'm gonna go back and, and thank this guy for inspiring me. I went back to his office and I found him and and I said, hey, I just wanted to, his name was Mr. Shiflet. I said, I just want to say thank you. You inspired me to be a math teacher. And he's just looking at me like, uh, you got the wrong guy. You know, I'm just like, yeah, man, you were my math teacher. He's just like, bro, I, no, I don't know what you're talking he's about. He's looking at you like you're crazy. And I'm just like, dude, like, it was like two semesters ago. You were my math teacher, man, and you were great. And he's just like, oh, that's right. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's just like, well, two years ago, a buddy of mine was on sabbatical and asked if I would cover his classes for him. So I taught math that year, and I'm just like, what are you talking about? He's all, I'm a geology professor, <laughs> you know? And it was great because, like, I would tell my girlfriend, who's now my wife at the time, I'm just like, yeah, best teacher ever, Mr. Shiflet. She's all, Mr. Shiflet, you mean the geology teacher? He was horrible. Like that, dude. And it was so crazy. Oh but, like, God. the whole time he was going like this, hmm, I don't really know. I thought he was, like, giving me a teaching moment, but he actually really didn't know. Yeah, no. He was figuring it out on the spot, you oh know? Oh, my God. And so he like told, taught me how to do that kind of stuff. You know? That's cool. Yeah. Talk about a quick brain. Yeah. Well, I think that's a uh, indicative on him and his teaching. How long have I known you? 15, well, I think since 16. 2005. Yeah. So. Yeah. He is very moody. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the, what moody is when kids don't get it like if he oh, brings dude. his a game to teaching and the kids just don't get it that day it brings them down oh, for man. sure so he's moody depending on how the kids do in class that day yeah right? i think that's pretty typical of a lot of teachers but the teachers yeah, that I, care yeah teachers i think care. definitely it's teachers uh, that don't care yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. anyway peace good seeing you uh, yeah. take it easy
Okay. Yeah, so that guy there has been my boss for, I don't know, since 2005, man. And uh, he's one of the guys that I was talking about when I said I really like the admin here. The admin's great, you know? So it's really supportive. You've been my, my boss for like the beginning of the year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, final question uh, for this interview. Uh, why did you become a teacher? Well, there you go. I just did that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was the one. I really wanted to, you know, make a difference, and I was inspired by that one teacher. You know, I was inspired by that guy, and, uh, you know, you know, and here I am today, still loving it for the most part. I think, uh, like I said, this is a pretty rough year, and Mr. Hutz is right, I get emotional, and, you know, sometimes I seem very frustrated or angry or, you know, but it's just like, it's just because, like, you know, I want to get across so, so badly to you guys, you know, because I think if you guys give it a chance, you know, um, you guys would be successful. I, I really feel like you guys can be successful with something that most people just think is, you know, unattainable or just a waste of time, you know? And yeah. I really, you know, I, I believe that. So. Yeah, I get cranky, you know, because like when, I, when I'm hungry, I get cranky and I can't really focus that much. That's why I grow, grab some lunch and during yeah. a lunch, then come here. So I can, you know, focus, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So that was the final question. Okay. Uh, so sorry, I can't share my, my funny story. That's but, okay. Uh, maybe maybe after you graduate, come back and visit me, and I'll uh, I'll share it with you. But it, it just is not appropriate. Right. I'm sorry, and so, I know that's probably going to make your listeners upset. You know, or <laughs> nah, it's fine. I, 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 I can simply understand. But snack. maybe you could post like part two. Part two? <laughs> later oh, okay. Or something. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Anyways, uh, any Cliff final hair. thoughts? Any final thoughts? No, I I you know I am. Um, I always have a lot to do in the morning, you know, and I've got a lot to think about and settle down. And, you know, the thought of you coming here was, um, you know, a little, uh, I guess, nerve-wracking in, in a way because I just, you know, I just wanted to give you my attention, you know, but um, uh, so I was a little apprehensive, you know, when you walked in. But, um, you know, I, I really feel like it was it was fun to be interviewed and, you know, talk about things from my past or, you know, um, so, you know, I think it's, you know, started my morning off pretty, pretty nicely. I think uh, it's a big deal, you know, as a teacher to come in here with a good attitude, you know, a fresh attitude, a positive attitude. And uh, I think a lot of times, you know, I get in here, traffic sets me off or running late sets me off or students needing help. And, you know, they come in on the day of the test asking them how to asking me what does X squared mean, you know, like that kind of stuff. And it's like, you know, I, it just depends, you know, a lot of my attitude, real, you know, based on uh, how am I trying to say this, like, it really makes a difference how I start my day, you know. And so I guess I just wanted to say, like, thanks for coming in here and, and uh, getting my day started, like, in a, in a positive and fun way. You know? All right. So uh, thank you for coming on, Mr. Brockfield. Right on, it was right much appreciated to do this. This was just like a little something you know I wanted to try out for the channel. You know, something new. You know, something fresh, something yeah. unique. You know, because I did this on my grandma a while back, and like my mom really liked this, so that gave me the idea to do this thing yeah. in the beginning. So, well, thank you for coming on. Yeah, right on, Demagia. Good stuff, dude. Good stuff, man.